What's up all my curly people? I'm Beyond Grenade and you're watching Beyond Grenade today. And today I'm launching a new segment on my channel called Curl Talk. Because we're gonna have curls obviously probably talking about curly topics but since we are girls who knows what we'll end up talking about but today i have a special curl friend shayna hey guys and uh shayna as you can probably guess got a big chop so we're going to talk about the truth behind big chops because they might seem like all you do is cut off your hair and then it just grows back perfectly but that might not be the case right Definitely not the case. Um, <laughs> in my situation, I cut all my hair off and ended up crying for like seven days. Oh no. <laughs> seven days, so uh, how long ago was this? This was in May, so about five months ago. And um, I decided to do it just kind of off a whim of my hairstylist telling me to cut my hair. She was telling me for about four weeks and okay. I was like considering, considering, considering. And I never had short hair. Definitely thought I wasn't gonna be cute with short hair, um, and I finally did it. And, and you I'm did here. it because of heat damage, color damage, new look. Like, what made you really cut it? First, it was heat damage. I straightened my hair every day. Mm -hmm. See what happens, guys. <laughs> every day for like five years. And while I was getting my hair done, like I said, with my hairdresser, she was just like, "We need to cut all this off and restart. Like Dang. your curls are not doing what they normally do. We need a fresh start." Fresh start, and what made you decide to do that fresh start? Because I'm sure she was pushing for a while. Like, what was the final trigger that was okay? It's time for me to cut it off. So the final trigger was definitely me just kind of taking the risk and starting over. So it was basically just, you know, stepping outside of my comfort zone one, getting rid of my heat damage, and being able to kind of do just the curly girl thing again. Um, I kind of miss just being able to wash my hair and have my curls out. Cause once you have heat damage, it's so hard. You're like trying to get like the straight pieces to curl. You're trying to get the middle to like look the same as the end. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a mess. It is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen girls that have a, pretty much a hot mess on their head. Like they have, you know, the curls at the top, the straight piece at the bottom. I know one of you is watching right now and you're holding on to that dead length for no reason. And I'm, you might've done that too. My question always is like, why? Like, why do you think it's better to have long, ugly hair versus like <laughs> short, healthy, beautiful hair. So long, ugly hair or short, beautiful hair. Well, I'm Jamaican and Italian and like in both cultures, just long hair is kind of a thing. Um, and my mom is Jamaican and she was just always like, keep your hair long. Like cutting my hair was never really a thing. It wasn't even like I was insecure about my curls. I was just like, oh, they're not looking the same. So I'm not gonna wear it curly. What would you say are the downsides of a big chop that many people don't really talk about? So the downsides of my big chop were probably like the initial, the initial crying is definitely like puzzling. I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Another downside I would say is just like having to be so much more knowledgeable about how you're gonna go about getting your hair to grow. Mm -hmm. I didn't know like how much work it really took to like know what you have to do. Yeah. Um, and I think that was something that I struggled with before and why I didn't want to cut it at first. But now that I did cut it and there's so much more information out there about how you should like be treating your curls and getting it to grow and a couple tips that you've given me. So I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm like more confident now than I was before about, I was like, oh, I don't know that I know how to take care of my hair really. Mm -hmm. Um, Taking care of it, people always think that like it's a lot of work to have curly hair, right. which is true to an extent. We do have certain rules we have to kind of follow, but once you kind of get into like a regimen of it, it really becomes second nature. And that's what I really want to stress through having my channel is that having curls is not as complicated as you think. My biggest tip for regrowing your hair or dealing with heat damage would be to deep condition once a week. That's like my holy grail sentence I say every time I talk to somebody. But if you really commit to using a deep conditioner, which is different than a regular conditioner, leave it on your hair for 20 minutes, rinsing it out and doing that like every Monday or whatever day you pick, you will definitely see your hair become softer, it'll be longer and your curls will be more defined. That is the number one thing. Are you? Are you deep conditioning once a week yet, or are you getting there? I'm, I'm almost there. Okay. <laughs> I was doing it very consistently, but I didn't do it this last Sunday, okay. so I'm off. I'll but. forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> what are some other hair growth things that you're doing right now, like in your, your weekly routine? So I have a scalp massager okay, that I try to good. use. I try to leave, do leave-in conditioner in it. Okay. I don't know if that's like a good tip or not. If you need moisture, it's a good tip. Right. I'm like, I try to keep enough moisture in there because my hair tends to be a little on the dry side. Okay. Uh, and what else do I do? I try not to shampoo it too much. Okay. I heard that, or I read that, and I'm not sure. <laughs> How often all the way do you true. shampoo? 
right now once a week. Is okay. that too that's much? That's good. No, that's good. Okay. That's good. I'm, <laughs> I'm over here. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> check. Check. <laughs> so for my transitioners watching, I just wanted to let you guys know that just because your experience after your big chop, you might still feel sad or like you don't, you know, might have regret. That is a normal feeling. You are not alone. Shana is someone who right. cut it off and then did feel that regret and it took her, what, five months to maybe be comfortable with it. So just because like, you know, you might watch YouTube videos or Instagram girls and they do their big chop and then they're just instantly happy, you might start to think about yourself like, why don't I feel that way? Like mm -hmm. that's, I cut it off. I should be happy about it, but I don't, that I make a mistake. And I think putting that much negativity on you is just going to make your journey harder. It definitely takes time. You have to have patience. And yeah. even at, at four months and you know, at your length now, how do you feel that patience like, you know, plays into that? Patience plays into it uh, at a really large level, mostly because that's all that you're gonna be told yeah. <laughs> to be patient. <laughs> it's really annoying, you know. <laughs> but at this point now, I'm like, so much has been lifted off my shoulders. Good. <laughs> so what has been lifted, for example? Other than the legs off my shoulders. Um, <laughs> but it just makes me feel like I took a risk and I adjusted to it and that kind of ultimately gave me growth within myself. I was like, this was something that I needed to do and everything happens for a reason. So I was glad that I did it because now I kind of look at myself a little bit differently and I have more confidence than I did before because it's like, I literally almost went bald and, <laughs> and I still was able to, um, feel myself a little bit yeah. like I was like yeah I didn't like it at first but like now I'm like wow I'm like a brand you new person you got this yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I always like looked at other people when they did the big chop and said like oh it was like I'm I'm a new me I'm like oh please yeah like, come on. <laughs> like your hair got me to a new person but now you actually feel that way I honestly feel that way okay so you might not get that I'm a new person right after the chop it might be a couple weeks it might be a couple months but I do feel confident saying that you will eventually get there and I think us in the curly community, we need to always encourage each other. I'm sure, like, you feel amazing when someone compliments you, right? Like, I mean, short hair or not. Feel amazing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but to know that you get those compliments with short hair, long hair, whatever, like, you, your personality is always gonna shine through. Yes, I love my curls. Yes, I'm very team curly, but it also shouldn't really define who we are. Uh, it's gonna be like an accessory that we do focus a lot on because it makes us happy, but the journey will also make you happy as well, knowing that you went from this length to maybe this length or whatever. So with all this being said, would you recommend doing a big chop? Would I recommend doing a big chop? I would. I think that it's like a great thing to do because when you're trying to get those healthy curls back or just your healthy hair back in general, it, I think it's necessary. You can do it in increments, obviously, but I just think that might take a lot much longer. Very long. <laughs> and while you're be more comfortable doing it like that, um, stepping out of your comfort zone has been like a great experience for me. But absolutely, if you're thinking about doing a big, a, a big chop and you are on the fence about it, I'm here to tell you <laughs> that you should definitely go for it because it's, it's a new life. Like it's, Liberating. Rejuvenating. Rejuvenating. <laughs> Rejuvenating, liberating, whatever you feel, it's always gonna be a positive feeling eventually. If you are considering doing a big chop, please leave me a comment below and let me know what's holding you back. Or if you have done a big chop, please leave a comment and let other people know how you feel about your big chop now, how your curls have changed. Would you recommend it? I really want my comment section to be a very like encouraging place. So please leave your stories below so we all can comment as well. You also become our curl friend. Let's stay connected. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Ms. Bianca Renee. And you can follow Shayna at? On Snapchat and Instagram at ShayLive and on Twitter underscore at ShayLive. Shayna, thank you for coming on Curl Talk. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I post two new videos every week, once on Friday and once on Sunday. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching Bianca Renee today.